So I wanted to make a quick video to talk about feature flags and how you and your team and your project could utilize feature flags to basically release features when you decide that they're ready and how they can help improve your workflow. So on a team, there's different ways to do code integrations. So I don't know if you've worked on a team with multiple people, you have a GitHub repo and some people be working on feature A, some people working on feature B, some people on feature C, and you need to basically merge all those changes in together as often as possible if you're doing continuous integration, basically to make sure that the features aren't causing conflicts in the system, okay? And so there's different ways to do it. There's feature branches, you can have long-lived feature branches, or you can do continuous integration where you keep on merging changes to a main branch, which is what I would probably recommend if you can handle it. Now, if you do plan on doing continuous integration, you're gonna either need some feature flags or sometimes they're called feature toggles where you'll have some type of logic that's been wrapped around a Boolean and you can just turn it on whenever you want. So let me give you a demo of what I'm talking about. On the video crafter, I have this button here called bulk generate YouTube shorts. And right now it says coming soon, but uh, little do you know, this is actually a feature flagged thing. So if I go over to my production instance, I have a bunch of environment variables and one of them that I can add in is called flag bulk generate YouTube shorts. And if I were to come in here and set this enabled and go back to my app, notice that now the button shows up, people can click this and they can use it. Literally any user who's using this application sees this enabled and they can actually start using it. So let me actually turn that off real quick because I don't want people using that. So let's just delete that. And now it's turned off. And again, on all the endpoints, like all my API endpoints are called actions and mutations with convex, but those are all also wrapped behind feature flags so that everything in my system has been turned off. So that is one example of how you can use feature flags. There's also another flag that I'm using in my system to basically allow users to publish to YouTube. I did talk about that in a previous video, but there's a button here that says post on YouTube, but that's also behind a feature flag. So if I go to my development environment, there's a flag called publish to YouTube. And if I look at it, I'll just set this to false. And now that button is gone. The user can't see it and all the endpoints that are related to it have been disabled. They'll throw errors if you try to hit them. In the example I gave, the feature flags are stored in environment variables and convex. And luckily convex is a reactive database. So when, the moment I change that feature flag, it just updates for all my users instantly, right? Which is nice. But depending on how your project is set up, you could have a Postgres database. Maybe you have a table called flags and you basically have a bunch of flags that you either turn on or off and your UI somehow needs to get notified that, hey, you just turned a feature on, go ahead and show that to all your users. Now, what I showed you works great for small projects and you can just hack your own feature flag system however you want, it doesn't really matter, or you can use a third-party service if you're that type of developer. But on a larger team, typically you want to do slow rollouts of features. Typically you have a smaller subset of users, you can call these like your test users, and you want to release the feature to those users and hopefully get feedback from that small subset to know if the feature was good or if the feature is causing a bunch of bugs. And then you can just turn it off real quick if there's any issues. Now, one way you could potentially achieve this is instead of just being a true false Boolean, you could potentially have like a role on certain users. So I could say this is a user that has a test role or a tester role or something. That role you can, in your code base, you could then have some type of checks to say if the user that's trying to make this request is a tester, and the feature flag is turned on. Let's just go ahead and show that for everybody. Okay, so that's a really great way of like, if I have a couple of people who are using the video crafter, in fact, I do have a couple of people in mind who I might want to give a special like upgraded role so that when I roll out features, they can turn it on just for them and then they can play around with it. They can give me feedback and then I can decide if I want to roll that out to everybody or not. Another approach is you can give a unique ID to users or you can kind of generate like a hash based on their user ID or based on their name. And if the hash starts with a certain letter or some small percentage that you can figure out, like let's say their hash is 32 characters and the first two characters start with AA, then you have a small percentage of users you can basically turn that flag on for, and then you can get feedback from those users. And every time those users log in, that hash is gonna compute to the same thing. And so they will always have that feature turned on. There's, there's tons of different ways you could do this, but I just wanted to kind of put that out there that it's not too hard to implement and it can kind of give you a lot of benefit because now you can just keep pushing changes to your main branch and I don't have to worry about like if what if a user uses this, right? I literally just turn it on and turn it off when I want to and I don't have a bunch of code just getting stacked up where I'm like too afraid to merge into main. I can literally merge stuff to main every day, multiple times a day and just 
keep it turned off. Now, honestly, in a really simple system, it usually involves just wrapping your API endpoints with a flag and also your UI just don't show certain buttons. But in some scenarios, feature flagging can get a little bit more complex. Basically, if you have an existing endpoint and you're not just adding a brand new feature instead, like what if you're actually modifying the functionality of an algorithm and you want to put that functionality change behind a feature flag, well, then you're going to have like in your code some type of if statement or branching logic to run a if feature is, uh, you know, if, if user is test and run the original logic if the user is not test. So that type of stuff can get a little bit complicated, but that's also an option as well. My main takeaway is just make sure that every time your code runs, like it somehow knows to check the flags or you have some type of system in place that can just promote the flag to all of your running systems so that you don't have to do a complete redeploy to like get the flag turned on. I mean, just doing another deploy is a good idea too. Like you could just have like a constants file with a bunch of like booleans that you could just say, hey, I'll just go ahead and just change this to true and I'll just do a, a redeploy. And if your deployment process is like five minutes or less, like it's not that big of a deal. But I would strive for like having it dynamic like I showed you in this demo and it'll be uh, really nice. All right, that's all I want to show you in this uh, video. Hope you guys learned something new by watching. If you did, like, comment, subscribe. Have a good day. Happy coding.